Hi guys, how are you doing? My name is Ben, I'm that bearded guy, and this week I've been playing Generation Zero by Avalanche Studios, a first-person action-adventure title released for the PC, PS4, and the Xbox One. The game commences with some wholly underwhelming rolling script to introduce you to the story. Although it doesn't actually give much away, but there is a pretty decent Terminator-esque soundtrack. From what I can gather, Sweden invested heavily in total defence, but after returning from a school trip, the country has changed wildly with machines now being the dominant force. The machines come in a range of variations, and the AI is pretty effective at keeping them moving, so if you sit still too long, you're in for trouble. I feel like I've been saying this a lot recently, but this is another loot and scavenge game where you hunt around the open world map, collecting weapons, ammunition, first aid and other articles. You can find weapon attachments like sights and silencers to modify the weapon, but there are also different types of ammunition available. You can equip two primary weapons, as well as a sidearm, and your inventory can hold additional equipment which can be used both offensively and defensively. The game uses an identical enemy indicator to that of Far Cry New Dawn, which is useful for knowing the direction of the enemy and their awareness of your presence. This provides the ideal interface to plan and prepare an ambush, making use of some of the gathered items. The vast open world map takes quite a while to negotiate on foot, and unfortunately that's the only option that I've found so far. The environment changes between day and night, and the weather engine creates a fairly immersive experience and adds variety to the complexity. A few things that I think are worth mentioning are that some of the dialogue elements of the game are not translated into English if you've got the subtitles turned off, so make sure you switch them on before you start otherwise you could miss out on some vital information. Secondly, much of the buildings are identical in terms of their interior layout and design, so whilst it does make it easier to search, it does come across a little bit lazy. Lastly, and slightly more frustrating, is the inventory interface, which is cumbersome to navigate in a hurry whilst in combat, but also there are quantities of some items which take up multiple spaces and others that don't. This means that despite equipping one item on the directional pad, once you run out, you have to re-equip it, which takes time. I found myself spending long periods simply searching through buildings and navigating the map, itching for combat just to break the monotony. The missions are fairly engaging, but in one example I had to search for a bunker within a dense town, and after around about 40 minutes walking in and out of buildings, I gave up and wandered off to find something more interesting. The game is actually pretty good in terms of the graphics, the AI, and the environment, but what does let it down is the loose storyline and the protracted travel required, making it one of my least favourite open world games so far. So if you've enjoyed this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to see more gaming reviews coming up in the very near future. Also if you're playing the game yourself then why not leave me a comment below and let me know how you're finding it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.